today we're going to implement the EOS subsystem from Epic itself. For that we need basically uh, three links to be opened. Once the developer portal from Epic itself, the documentation of the EOS, and we need the advanced session binaries. So to begin with, we're going to add a new product to our developer portal. For that we just log into the portal create a new product and name it FPS template US. We just copy this because we need this product name later on for the Unreal Engine itself. So we're going to click there. We want to skip for now. We don't want a new overlay here. And on the FPS template US, we just want to click on it and we got already C. We got some keys here we need to set up. So first of all, we need a client that actually can run on the server. So for that, we want to go to the clients menu, add a new client. For the client name, we're gonna name it client US. You can name it whatever you want. We want to add a new client policy. For the client policy name, I'm just gonna name it client this time. And we want to we want it to be peer to peer for now because it's easy to implement. We want to save and exit it. And we want to save and exit as well. So now if we see in the products, we got a client ID set up. Also, we want to set up the applications. So we actually using the US. For that, we're just going to go to the Epic account servers and we go on the permissions stop. And for the permissions, we want online presence and friends to be required and enabled. Save this on a link to clients. We want this client we just created, like the client US for me and save it. So once we did, we did the basic stuff for the dev portal, we want to get in the product settings. So we got all this lined up right here. And next step is we want to download the advanced sessions. You have to download the one for your engine. For me, it's the 5.0.3. Uh, 5 I already downloaded it and I will just open it from here get those two and extract them in directly into the project I've created for this. This one is a clean project, so there's nothing else in it. So we want the US tutorial and we want in the tutorial folder or the project folder itself, we want a new folder called plugins. And in the plugins, we're gonna extract those. Next up, we're gonna open, open our project we've just uh, created we want to go into plugins and in here we want to search for EOS and we uh, want to activate the online subsystem EOS beta except that it. it's just a message there's a beta it's a bit buggy and stuff like how you used to get a beta so we're gonna restart it now so once it has boot up we can actually see the US online subsystem is activated with it. it's US shared and US voice also our advanced session plugin, the one we've just imported earlier in the plugins or uh, in the plugins, plugins folder is already enabled by default. So we're gonna close this. We don't need this for a second. So next up, we wanna go into the folder where our project is located. For me, it's on volume D and in the EOS tutorial. From there on, we want to go into config and we wanna open the default engine. So in the default engine, we already see online subsystem and it sets to Steam. We just want to delete those. We don't need them for this. And we want to open the documentations from Unreal Engine from where we just go down to the default engine tab where the online subsystem US config is uh, already created. We want to put it in there and we just clean it up a bit. So basically now, if we start the game, it will use the EOS as a default subsystem to connect to. So I'm gonna save those, close it, and we don't need this anymore, or we don't need this anymore. We can close it and just keep this uh, product settings active. Next step, we want to tell um, our engine that it has to use some settings for 
EOS to work. So we open the project settings, we go all the way down here into the plugins menu and we're gonna open the online subsystem US. So default artifact name is the one we've just created for me, the FPS template US. So I'm just filling the name here. I want to be the overlay enabled and uh, social overlay enabled. I also want that my account is logged in. Request account linking, you will see what it means later. And we want to set up our artifact like the product ID, we want all these things set up. For the artifact name, it's the same as the default artifact name, FPS template US for me. So next up, we want to have our client ID. In here in the product settings, we can see the client ID. We just copy it and we fill it in. We do the same for the client secret. We want to do the same for the product ID. And the sandbox ID. And also for the deployment ID. So we got it here. So after we set those, we need an encryption key. Encryption key is uh, 64 um, types long. For me, I'm just going to use 64 zeros in this one. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. So we got 8, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. This is a 64 now. So we can just close this down. We don't need it anymore. We can just save everything we've done so far. In the content, I just want to get the uh, login working. So I'm going to go to the BPGM menu because it's the first one loading up in the game. So I'm open this, open the full blueprint editor. In the event graph, I want just an event begin play. In the event begin play, I already want to branch. Because I don't want to log in, then more than once I've, I've uh, set up the game, like started the game. So if I'm going back from uh, a game ended and I'm going back to the lobby, I don't want to log in all over again. So the condition on that one would be is locked in. So if I'm locked in, it's gonna specify in this one. It sees if I'm locked in or not. From the specific player, I just want the player controller output. Get player controller. So it's me actually being logged in. If I'm logged in, I want to print a string for me that says I'm logged in already. If I'm not logged in, I want to be logged in. So I'm gonna get a login at once lobby login user. I got this uh, this node. I want to expand it towards this so I can see the off type and stuff. For the player controller, we got the same one again. We just plug it in and we got our player controller set up to the login user as well. So for the account, uh, for the off type, we want account portal by default. That's uh, how we log in. On success, we want to know if we successfully logged in, so successfully logged in. If we can't log in, maybe because we are online, we are not running on Apex or something, we declined the connection. We want to print as well, telling us not logged in correctly. So we got this basically working already. And if we go towards running the game, for this to work, you always have to set it to standalone game. And from there, you want to uh, play the game. So it's loading up as a standalone game and we can see if it's working or not. So what you can see right here, it's starting. It's trying to connect to the US subsystem. As we are not a public brand, like, we haven't set our um, product to be proven by uh, Epix. We need to authorize, authorize it. So we're just going to tell, yes, we want to continue with the application and we want to exchange data between the application and Epic Games. So we go switch back into the game. So we are successfully locked in right now. We can open our social screen, we can see like achievements, settings and stuff. 
So for now, if we want to create a multiplayer match, it won't work because it's using the default settings we already have set by default from the template. So it will just loop forever to load a new match. So from there on, we want to create a new sessions. We go to BP PC menu. This is where the settings are located for creating a new match, crea creating a new match, finding sessions in the server browser, of joining a match instantly if we found a match. So basically this is pretty easy. We want to create session node to be create session from advanced sessions. So there's a big, th there's a bit difference between those. So what we have to set here is, first of all, we're gonna delete those. We don't need it anymore. We want to have a node in the create match. So as soon as we create a match, we want to create a one session. On success, we want to load the open level by name. On failure, we want to put it in there. Like it was before, we just uh, using another node. So the player controller is a, uh, is itself like it's us. We want to create a reference to self. So we are the player controller. We want to create a session. So use LAN. We can just totally delete it from here. We don't need it anymore. So we just deleting out those nodes. For public connections, we want to put it in here. So our game modes tells us uh, how many connections we can allow. So we want it to be allowed wide. Use lobbies of available. We can we can like close that. Should advertise start of the game. So basically, everything's working with that. Just creating a new session. Next up would be the server browser node. We gotta find find session. We can just delete this, and we want to find find advanced sessions or like find sessions advanced. We want this to be a bit more to the right, and we can use this uh, player controller. Will be always the reference to itself, so we can just plug it in here. Max results. We can leave this at like. Oh, 20 because in the server browser we might want to have 20 results playing right now we don't want to use LAN we want to search uh, server type to search in this one dedicated service only this is the actual workaround for the session advanced because this is from the steam session advanced and just build a bit different so we need dedicated service only so we don't want to search for lobbies. This will break stuff, so we leave it out. And for minimum slots available, we want at least one. You can also leave zero, so you can see full lobbies in the server browser, but we don't want it here. So we just search for at least one space available. So on success, we just want to proceed with the with the advanced session and say everything's fine. We we found a match. From the results, we want to put it in here and the sessions found. So if we don't find a session, we want to put it in here and it tells us there's no sessions available that we can join. Basically, just copy this one. Go by, go by the join match if exists. It will, it, this is just a quick join. So we want to put it in here. Do the same here and move those notes for a bit. Move them to the right. And we want this one cramped in here. So from there, from the sessions found, we want to go here in the advanced session, fire it up. From there on a, on success, we want to be back on the sessions found. We want the results of sessions found. We want several, uh, a reference of self again for the play controller and everything we set up uh, in the top already. Just gonna works for us in this one as well. So it's the same as above. Just this one is for the quick search. If we can't find a match in the quick quick join match, we want to play the error, no match found, everything's fine. So we can basically just compile, save it, close it, and we can start right now. We're gonna save everything we've done. And it starts up the game again. So as it started, it will send us always, always. If you package it or not, it will always send us with the 
actual requirements we have, it will always send us to the screen. We're going to allow it again so we can see that we are currently successfully logged in. So our account is online. We can see here we are online. We can go to the multiplayer. We can click join match. It, it won't found, find any sessions because we are the only ones scanning that place right now. But we can create a match now. If I want to set a deep left match by default, I want to play big maps, I'm just gonna load it up. But you can see, we spawn in, we can play. So every, everything's working. So if we just gonna go back to the menu. So if we are back from the menu, you can see we're already logged in, so we don't have to uh, start the whole procedure again. We can just quit it and everything's working. So, but if you for now want anyone else to play with you, test the multiplier with you, you want to go back to the top, go in the organizations and you would invite someone. Like you need their email address, they're using for the EPIC login and you assign them the role EPIC account service so they at least play with you. If not, you can set them like this. So basically, go back to the organization, in, invite someone, and you can play together. And that's it. You got the basic multiplayer working, and you're good to go. We provide extensive documentation and video tutorials on our website. You can purchase the FPS template by clicking the link in the description below. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe. See you next time.